Sophie, it's so kind of you to show us your garden. It, I'm just bowled over by it. Oh, you're lovely. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows you for your wonderful Port Marion pottery, Sophie Conran, all your wonderful range of furniture, things for the house. And this is your wonderful home and garden. Um, your front door is very welcoming, isn't it? I love all your pots of tulips bursting out. And your dog, Frank. Hello, Frank. <laughs> Two hello. of them. Two of Mouse them. is coming too. <laughs> hello, hello um, Mouse. Yes, I mean, I love, Frank. I love doing pots around the door to sort of ring in the changes, particularly at this time of year, you yes. know, with all of the tulips coming up and life just beginning in the garden. It's nice to have something welcoming and I love all the different sizes of the pots and to mix it with the box. Yes, and all different styles as well. Yeah. It's a lovely eclectic mix, isn't it? I love the whole frontage of your house here because I think it's really unusual because you're sort of set into the side of the bank, which is studded with lovely daffodils now, flat platform, and then you've got the wall on this side, which is punctuated with several gateways. Yes, and, it is. <laughs> and what is more extraordinary is this side is mainly brick and the flip side is stone. I've never seen a wall with one side of one and one side of something else. And I can't think why you would do that. Do you think they did it for cost? Or do you think there used to be a wall here before and then they faced it with brick? It might have been that all the brick on that side got weathered away because of the wetter weather beating against it. And Maybe. So, they it. so I don't know. I would always long for the app that comes along that you can just put in a house and you see all the changes that have been made yeah. over the hundreds of years. I'm <laughs> sure they'll do one one day, but not yet. And yes, that, if it could talk, it would be great, wouldn't oh, it? <laughs> so invaluable. Yeah. And you'll see us so close to the house. A little bit too close. It is a little bit too yeah. close. I mean, yeah. I've had it surveyed a few times. Um, and there is cracking in the house, but apparently they're not connected. Mm. Yeah. But if you take the top off, so this one's had the top taken out. Has it? They just go Everybody. out rather than up. Yes, and then it hits the house, but I suppose it could come out that way. We'll see. And of course, <laughs> the, the more you cut a tree back, the roots die back accordingly, don't they? So you are helping with the damage a bit because obviously a tree that's smaller doesn't need such a big root zone yeah um so hedges have a much smaller thing and we but do keep on top of it so every year we trim it back a little bit yes but it is nice the way it frames the house although yeah. perhaps a bit close for comfort <laughs> um can you show me your lovely dining area please i love i've seen pictures and it just looks so amazing at the back of the, the, house. Of the house yes yeah. let's go round so here we've got beds and at this time of year what we're doing is we're doing the roses yes. and um, we went to a course with a, an amazing woman called Nif Barnes who does particularly good rose pruning. Um, so little by little we're in introducing her style of doing it. And Nif does them with big curves, Dad. Wonderful, yes. kind of circles and... And it makes them flower much more, yeah. doesn't it? And it looks so gorgeous. The other thing in the front um, is I love, so if you that osmanthus. So you had a big bush there and you raised the canopy and made that lovely multi-sem tree. So yes, there was a big bush. It was pretty unwieldy. Yes. Um, but underneath was this amazing trunk, a very, very sculptural trunk. So I just lifted the canopy and, and now you get to see under it and it's got a few ferns and things planted in the back. Oh, they just look so different like that, don't they? From being a rather amorphous bush, they seem to have a lot more style and you can grow right up to yeah, it, which is much right nicer. Up to it. Much and also nicer. I've put more tender things underneath, um, like I've got a Melianthus back there. Oh, really? So it has a little bit of protection. And that Melianthus survives here in the winter? It's Borderline. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they are lovely. Yeah. No, it's amazing. The temperature difference under a tree canopy, I find, is quite is mi much milder. Yeah. It's that bit of protection. It's like having a greenhouse almost over you. So this is your live-in area in the summer. You spill out here, you eat, you drink, you entertain. So the kitchen's there, so we come straight out. And normally here, I've got this amazing um, barbecue made by it's a kind of south american thing and it's made yeah. by this company called country fire kitchen 
Right. So we're barbecuing here and then we've got the table. Sometimes we bring all of the dining room table out and have long, big lunches there, which is great. Lovely. So you say we're barbecuing. So you're the barbecue or your I husband? I do it sometimes. Oh, right. And my son yeah. sometimes do it, oh, does it. right. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. We all love cooking. So. Yeah. I can imagine there's almost yeah. <laughs> rivalry to cook in your house rather than you do the cooking. <laughs> yes. <I'll> do cooking. <laughs> What I love about this is you've got this lovely sort of formal facade and it's unusual in these sort of houses, in my experience, that they actually can step out onto an eating area. And I see you cleverly made these timber steps that come down over the grill. Because so many people would say, oh, you can't get down, there's a grill underneath. Yeah. But you've overcome the problem. So there's a little bit of light getting through, through yeah. and um, it was made by a local chap who yep. I actually went to school with. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and yeah, it works really well. Mm. And but I'm not so keen on the grills. I know that we need light for downstairs. Yes. I've got a laundry under there. Um, and that's why I've got the pots. So the pots is sort of break it up because it, they, yeah. Well, with a grill like that, I, they almost remind me of grill ha grills in greenhouses. You know yes. how you have the grill. I, I think they're just, I like them actually. So they were all painted white. And I, oh, were um, they? Yeah, I just stripped all the, the paint off. No, they're nice lead colour, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. And I like your idea for the table. That this. is such a clever <laughs> idea. Did you make that? Yes. Well, just we two just... trunks of thing and a nice top. Yeah. So we had lots of wood, you know, We've got big woods up here, yeah. so trees come down occasionally. Yeah. And uh, these were knocking around, and I sort of, yeah, just put it knocking together. Knocking around, and you sort of knock them together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just ha kind of happened. And your that new hedge was there when you came. The new hedge was here, but you uh, when it came, it. Um, and I've really just had it cut into a shape that mm. I wanted. So creating these big bulbous bits, and um, yeah, it's lovely. Really so, nice. It's, it's incredible having that here. It just encloses it on this side, gives it shelter from the westerly winds. And um, the way then the garden goes into the landscape is fun, isn't it? It's very simple, very low key, almost no distinct line. But there is a bank, presumably, at the end of the moan bit. There's a little bit of a bank. There's li only a little bit of a bank. Yeah. And then it, it looks to me like there was a tennis court or something there cut in by that bank. They wanted it flat for some reason, maybe it was croquet, but what I love about this is the placement of the trees and the different uh, fence, fence uh, lines and then Folding also you've in. got terraces back there. So apparently, I don't know if this is true, but they are medieval terraces and there would have been a village. So all the way through these woods up here, it's terraced, so it's man-made terracing and runs all the way along. Oh, were they vineyards? Because that's what well, they... Well, it's north-facing. Oh, that would... Well, that would be west-facing, wouldn't it? West is over there. East is there. Oh, so it's not... So they wouldn't be vineyards? No, I don't think so. Unless so they're... why would they have terraced the land like that? It is extraordinary, isn't it? And then, it? in the springtime, you can see um, ridge and furrow in this field. Ah. So from upstairs, when the light hits it, right. So you, it's nice to sort of have that feeling of the history of the landscape. Yeah, and I love the way all the folds sort of yeah. roll into each other. Yeah, and another whopping cedar there, lovely, isn't it? Really nice. Yeah. So this cedar is obviously much older, and we've had a few of the branches have fallen. They get very heavy, and we had a heavy downpour of snow one night. There was this incredible crack and yeah. we came out and one a huge limb had fallen mm. so we're just trying to manage it at the moment by cutting some limbs off to make sure it doesn't pull the whole thing down yeah but that does happen in time the lower limbs drop don't they and you get more at the top and sometimes yeah. with really big old oak trees when you've got big sort of limbs that are potentially unstable they just cut them back don't they and leave like a trunk with the odd limb on it and it's sort of retrenchment because all the tree will grow back down from that lower point and they're more stable like that obviously than a tree that's two or three times the size it just means you can prolong the life of them yeah. which is really nice because those old trees with all those 
sort of holes and hollows are great for bats and birds and all sorts of fungi and bugs that you get nowhere else. We've got so much wildlife here. Mm, I um, bet. <laughs> just looking out of the window yes. any time of day, there's always something going on. Yeah. Which is one of the yeah. great joys of the place. Animates the whole place, yeah. yes. I'm, I'm anxious to see your vegetable garden because I've okay. heard great things about it. <laughs> Show me the way. Lovely. Let's go this way. So, Sophie, this <laughs> is to die for, isn't it? It really is. It's my little piece of heaven. And this is in February. And it looks amazing. Don't you agree? Yes, it looks amazing. You like it in here, don't you? Again, I can see your design thing coming through, isn't it? You know, <laughs> lovely geometry of the big willow arches and I see you've made these I think they're so nice to make like this aren't you just put two stakes in either side and then you have the curvy bit over the top yeah and it, it is quite a lot of work it is and then they're all wired together yes yeah and they will not well they will start to root do you find the willows yes. start to root you, we get great big plumes of and do you like well, that, or do you just cut them off? Um, I like a little bit of it. A little yes. bit of it. Oh, that's nice to keep the yeah, greenery. Yeah. Because yeah. in places we've done that, and they, when they've been growing, when we're making willow trellises and things, they actually graft themselves together where they butt. Oh, really? And it's oh, amazing. You get grafted trellis, self-grafted. It's very <laughs> nice. And what will you plant up these? So we'll put a kind of string mesh. Yes. You know oh, lovely. Yeah. Yes. So all over. All over. And yes. then we've got lots of gourds and beans and sweet peas. Very nice. Very nice. And then indeed. also the nasturtiums all climb up there as well. So it's all a wonderful yeah. kind of... And you've got the same some grid system there. What is that supporting? So is that broad, was... No, I mean broad beans. That no. was for chrysanthemums. Ah. So we had a lot of chrysanthemums um, autumn and yes. that was to stop them flopping. Yeah, that's a very nice, so I did that with my broad beans last year, and it's very simple to do, and it yeah. looks nice, doesn't it? You don't like to take them down when they're finished. I like all of these structures. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? And you've got a fair bit now, is that celeriac? That's celeriac. Your celeriac is quite plump, isn't it? Because it likes a moist soil, and you must be fairly dry. We're not dry. Well, it's been well. It has been wet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's raining yes. endlessly. Mm. <laughs> but I think if you're as much sorry, no, you're not as dry as us. You're right, of course, which is why your celeriac is probably bigger than mine is often. But I think a lot of people find it difficult to grow, and I find the trick is to sow them under cover. Do you in the yes. spring? Yes. Well, and we sow most things that are yeah. under cover. So do I, and then yeah. I get them out at the beginning of May, and I leave mine in until the first hard frost but i see yours have got through the frost yeah well it hasn't been that cold this year the no. thing that's been worse for them is we've had rabbits oh. which we've got rid of now but uh, <laughs> what are you doing mouse you should be rabbiting <laughs> um, but should we go in yes they do say don't they that they almost double in size between october and november and i think a lot of people complain in october they're too small and they think but they will go on swelling yeah, yeah very nice let's go on inside and you've got radicchio i see we've got radicchio and we've got a um we've got some beetroot there are some broad beans there yes uh we've got the last of the chard leeks yeah um yeah we've got some nice things and then in the polytunnel we've got uh lovely lettuces and things come through little salad leaves very nice this and is my new project so we've got the chickens over there, yes. the amazing chickens. And what and type of chickens are they? They're lavender pekings. Lavender pekings, lovely. And then the fruit cage, which is going to be planted up soon, which will mm. be great. Let's have yes, a look in Yes, come here. in. <laughs> so it smells pretty amazing in here, doesn't it? Oh, smell is to die oh, for in the, the sun. sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, this is just heaven, isn't it? So you've got loads of pelargoniums. Yes. What is the citrus fruit over there? This is a small orange called Cormandel. And, and it's isn't it lovely? An it's absolutely an orange and it flowers and fruits all year. And you can eat them whole. Wow. I think they're absolutely delicious. Say the name for me again. Cormandel. Mmm. Mmm. 
Aren't they good? So delicious. Mm. Really Way refreshing. sweeter. It's almost like a tangerine in sweetness. And then the skin has just got that nice citrusy bitterness to it. It really makes your mouth feel mm. great, doesn't it? God, that's so good. Really good. Um, and then lots of jasmine. Um, it's a great time for jasmine, isn't it? Yeah, this is my favourite, which is called... I've forgotten the name of it now, but I grow it in my porch. Polyanthemum. Jasmine and polyanthemum, isn't it? Doesn't it smell really, heaven? Mm, really, really nice. And what about that tall pelagonian over there? That is... An unusual colour. A kind of coral colour. Isn't it amazing? Mm. There's and another one here. You can see this one. This is the same. Oh, yeah. So I've got lots of it. I started with the cutting, and um, then we've just propagated it. So it's kind of popping up everywhere. And because it gets so leggy, I thought I'd try it against the wall. Good idea. And um, yeah, it's been fantastic. We actually need to tie it on a little bit because um, a few of the, it's broken and collapsed. But you can see it's coming up all along here. I mean, it's prolific. It's going to yeah. take over completely. Really good. <laughs> yeah. And even the Eridron, this daisy, in full flower. So the, in this temperature, does it just flower? Eridron Karvinskis, does it just flower all No, it's just come back now. It's come back I think it's the light levels. Mm. Um, it, it is one of the longest flowering plants it really I find. Is. It just goes on and on and on outside, doesn't yeah. it? But in here, it's obviously really, really loving it. And you've done the same trick with the table here. Yep. So when I first bought the house, the only thing that was here was this wall and some of the retaining wall around the edge. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up with a greenhouse. You know, my parents made an amazing garden. And you grew up in the greenhouse. And I would have <laughs> spent, a, I did spend a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a kind of magic environment, isn't it? Yes. It is, especially so, with all the heat yeah. and none of the wind. And that hit of green, it, this time of year is just beautiful, isn't it? So I um, got a company called Woodpecker Greenhouse to make. Would you like to go outside, Mousy? Mousy just says it's too hot for him in here with his thick Yes, coat. you've just had your hair cut too. <laughs> and so Woodpecker... Did it to your design, or is this yes. with the gothic windows and things? Yeah. Well, they had them in their catalogue. Yes. And um, I just thought, yeah, they're quite interesting. They're fun. I always yeah. think with a garden building, because it's not ne if it's not joined onto the house, you can have a real bit of fun with it, yeah. can't you? You can go completely wacky, do something totally different in style if you want. I'm not saying this is wacky, <laughs> but you've got, I think you've got artistic license to create what you want with a garden building. And I think that's what's really fun about gardening. Whereas obviously near a grade two listed house, you have to be right beside it, be a bit more careful. Mm. But when you go further away, you can get away all sorts of different things. No, so this is a really productive garden. I like the way it slightly slopes. It's rather yes, nice, isn't it? It is. Um, and, you know, originally this was going to be a working greenhouse with all the seeds and everything in it. Yes. But then I couldn't help but go, actually, I just want it for my pelagoniums. <laughs> so where are your working greenhouse? Is that the polytunnel then? Or we've do got a polytunnel and then we've got a tiny little greenhouse, which is the first greenhouse that I had. Right. Yeah. Yes. And then I've sort of expanded. You see, that is the problem with greenhouses. You, you can, they can never be big enough. There's never you enough. You can have no, enough of them. Exactly. Never enough. No, yeah. we're already planning another polytunnel. <laughs> oh gosh well thank yes. you very much indeed that's been fascinating to see oh that thank garden. you and i can see all your design ideas um and my car will go home with a few cuttings and maybe even a bantam cockerel yes thank <laughs> you so much oh thank you